What's up and what's happening everybody? It's Eric with FisherDrumming.com and I'm back with you for another lesson. We're looking at three big beginner rock drum fills, okay? This is gonna be key in helping you get some more vocabulary for tearing up the set, especially in a rock genre when you're really trying to hit the drums hard and make them sound big. This is gonna be fun, so hang on, let's get right into it. So first things first, let's set the table, let's look at the context of these rock drum fills so you know how we're playing it. The first two fills are eighth notes, the last fill is 16th notes. So that's the subdivision we're gonna be counting in. The second thing you need to know is actually all three of these fills, our hands are unison notes. So when we're talking about the genre of rock music, we want our drums to sound big, we want them to have a lot of excitement and power in them and really go with the music. And a lot of times, the best way to do that is to play big, simple fills on the drums where our hands are playing at the same time and we're just alternating the notes with our kick drum. And that's mainly how we're gonna be looking at all three of these fills. They're all gonna be played very similarly, just with some different sticking patterns and some different ways we can orchestrate it around the set. For example, one drummer that uses a lot of type of these big rock fills would be Dave Grohl when he played with Nirvana and also when he played his own drums on Foo Fighters, a lot of the albums, a lot of the songs that were recorded, he did the drum takes on. And if you listen to those songs, he's doing a lot of these big heavy fills. And here's the great thing, for a beginner drummer, this isn't gonna be over your head. You're gonna be able to understand when I break it down in bite-sized pieces, how to play these fills. They're very easy to understand. The only thing that's gonna be hard for you is actually getting them clean and getting the dynamic levels right and also your time right. So we want everything to fall in the right place at the right time and that's something that's gonna come with practice. But as far as you understanding what I'm doing, it's gonna be quite simple once we break it down. Okay, so fill number one, let's get into it. It's one measure long, we're counting eighth notes, and actually, we're gonna play up to the four, to beat four. That last eighth note is gonna be a rest, but if you are really killing it and you wanna add a kick at the end of that, you can double kick into the next measure, okay? And I'll show you what that sounds like. But the basic way to play it would be one and two and three and four. Oh my gosh. Now don't click away. I know it's very simple. And you're like, Eric, I can play that in my sleep. Well, guess what? I'm about to show you an orchestration that maybe you haven't played. So once again, the sticking is unison hands, kick, hands, kick, hands, kick, hands. All right? And the way we're orchestrating it, now you know what you're playing, and now you need to know how we're gonna play it. So the orchestration is where are we gonna play those notes on the drums? So the hi-hat and the snare are being played together. Those are the, f that's the first downbeat. One, and then it's got and on the kick, and then we got two, both hands on the toms. Left hand on the rack tom, right hand on the floor tom, coming down at the same time. Then we're doing kick, coming back to the hi-hat. So that's all we're doing is we're alternating our hands, our unison hands are just alternating from the hi-hat to the floor toms. So we have one and two and three and four. And then let it rest an eighth note measure on the and, and then we're gonna crash on the one. So black a doom goom, black a doom, bam, all right? Now, if you wanna get, like I said, if you wanna add an extra kick note at the end, that's great. Just make sure you're ready to kick again on the downbeat. So it'd be black a doom doom, black a doom doom, bam. So I know that sounds simple and it's easy to understand. But remember, knowing something and playing it the right way are two different things. So it's not just enough to know, oh, that's how those notes are played. That's very easy, right? Well, not so much. It's how you execute it that really matters. So it's how you play it. You have to play it like a rock fill. You have to mean it, and you have to have your notes sound big and dynamic and consistent. Another thing to think about is you don't wanna, on this particular one, we want our notes, our hands, to be unison. We don't wanna flam those notes, which means we're hitting one note slightly later than the other. We want those notes to be consistent. bam. And the other thing is, this is gonna be a, a fill that's gonna be played at a faster tempo. This would be something we'd be playing much faster in a song, so we're gonna start it nice and slow, and I want you to get it down slow at a very slow speed, 
once you get that muscle memory built up, then we can start to speed it up, okay? The goal, though, is to get these nice and fast when you're rocking in a song, and we just got boom, ta, do ga, chaka, do ka, chaka, do ka, boom, you know, and you can knock it out quick without even thinking about it. That's where you want to get. So I'm going to show you how that sounds nice and slow, but then I'm going to show you some other examples of how you can move this sticking around the drums in different ways. I'm just going to start changing up the orchestration. I want you to see how just this simple pattern, this simple sticking, can be played all different ways on the kit to make it your own and make it more creative. And you can just have freedom knowing this pattern, okay? So that's the next step, is after you get the pattern down, after you just get comfortable playing that type of sticking, then I want you to be creative and come up with your own ways of using it around the set. So let's check it out together. So another thing to remember is I'm just showing you an example of how to place this in a groove setting, but you guys could change it up. And one of the ways that this sounds good too, and this fill is applicable play to 16th notes if we're just playing a slower groove. So let's say our groove is more like this tempo. One and two and three and four and bracket chuka bracket chuka one and two and three and four and one and two and three and a four and a bam. You know, you can play it that way as well. So don't just think, oh, I have to play it as eighth notes. No, remember, we can change the subdivision according to whatever groove we're playing. So don't get bogged down and, oh, I can only play this as eighth notes. No, you can play this as 16th notes if you're playing a slower groove. So I don't want to confuse you on that. I just want you to know all of your options so that you can really make this more musical and, and fit it in the part that you want to fit it in. Okay, so that was fill number one. Let's look at fill number two. This fill's going to be very similar to the last one, but we're going to be playing two eighth notes in a row with our hands. And just that small change is going to absolutely change the feel of the fill, and I want to give you a new idea in how to use these eighth note unison types of fills. So to explain it simply, this fill is going to be played like hands kick, hands kick, hands, hands, kick, hands. That's one measure long, just like the last fill. If we're counting eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Let me bring up the sticks to give you a better idea of what we're doing here on the orchestration. We got double snare, kick, double tom, kick, double tom, then bring our left hand down, playing the floor tom still, kick, that again, floor tom and snare together. So, uh, 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 uh. snare, kick, tom, kick, tom, snare, kick, snare, and our right hand's always on the floor tom, okay? then we're crashing on the one. Now here's an important note that really makes the rock fill sound good when you're playing these unison notes on your snare. We want to actually flam the notes on this one on our snare. And what I mean by that is we have a grace note followed by an accented note. So the grace note's gonna be played softer and it's gonna be played slightly in front of the accented note, okay? So anytime we're playing the unison notes on the snare, it's natural to let that flam, okay? Bra, bra. So instead of just ta, ta, it's gonna sound like bra, bra. It adds a little bit fuller of a sound. It makes it sound a little bigger and more interesting. So a lot of times rock songs are gonna have those big flam notes on the snare. So I want you to practice that as well. 
and let's play it nice and slow to the click. And then like the last time, I'm gonna show you this orchestration first, and then I'm gonna show you some other ways you can take this same sticking pattern and orchestrate it differently around the set, just so you can have some more creative ideas with it. So let's move on to fill number three. Now this last fill is gonna be one measure long and we're playing 16th notes. So it's gonna be a little bit longer of a fill here, but not any more complicated. We're actually gonna be doing that same thing of just unison notes alternating with our kick. Now this fill specifically sounds good played at a faster tempo, but like I said, you need to learn it slow and you need to get the dynamics and your timing right before you can speed it up. So the simplest way I want you to do the orchestration first is actually just keep your unison notes on your snare and then your kick drum obviously where your kick drum is. So we're gonna be counting out the whole measure in 16th notes and that's gonna be one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So our kick drum on the E's and the U's is gonna be one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, and our hands one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. All together it's one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay, so we can play it nice and slow to a click so you can have a chance to play along with me. And we're gonna, we're gonna do that as the first orchestration, just snare and kick. Then once again, I'm gonna show you how to move this around the set in more creative ways, bringing in our toms, and playing some different variations with it so you can have some more creative ideas. And just like the last fill, it's gonna feel natural and sound good to flam our notes on the snare. Remember, that means grace note followed by an accented note. So they're coming slightly after each other. Okay, that's gonna give it a little bit more of a fuller sound on the snare.
made it to fill number three, and I wanna congratulate you on that, way to go. But before you click away, I wanna remind you that I really need your support on this channel to keep the videos coming. So you can do that by just dropping a comment down below, giving me a thumbs up, and subscribing if you like these types of lessons and you wanna see more like this. If you wanna be notified when a new lesson is released, make sure to click the bell so you get notified when I come out with a new lesson. And lastly guys, if you want more drum lessons to help you become a solid drummer, then visit the link down in the description below to fisherdrumming.com. There you can find lesson courses that are designed to help you be, take you from a beginner drummer to an advanced player. There's multiple courses that you can enroll in and you can actually drop by with your email and I'll give you a free practice loop when you sign up. So thank you so much for watching this lesson. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. It's my goal to make drumming simple, something that you can understand and get better at every day. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care. Mm -hmm.